Microsoft didn't make iOS Office because Satya Nadella was there. It existed and it was done. He just mm-hmm. came in and released it. It's like, yeah, the Windows Touch Windows version isn't done. That's fine. We're still releasing. Why? Because we have to be a company whose products are available everywhere. We're not the Windows company. We need to be like our our role, our nature is to our advantage is to serve all the customers needs to deliver right. like everything's better if you use us. So that's sort of step one, getting off of Windows, realizing we need to be everywhere. And reviving step two, the, though, the integration promise, basically. Well, because exactly. The and that's where it fails to deliver value. If, if you can't be everywhere. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, t- so the, 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 so Slack comes along as a huge thing. Microsoft considers buying Slack and they consider just building a Slack competitor. Teams is not Teams is a Slack competitor, but that's not the way to understand it. Teams is a platform. Teams is the modern Windows. It's the center of work. Everything plugs into it. You can go there. You can live in Teams. You can access your files from Teams. You have conversation in Teams. Third part, there's and there's like a, a, a framework for third parties to plug into Teams. And the idea is this is sort of the new hub of the spoke. All this stuff sort of works together. And Teams can work on your phone. And Teams can work with XYZ. And that's that's sort of the new interface. I call it the operating system for the cloud from, from sort of a strategic perspective for mm-hmm. Microsoft. So in this context, it makes perfect sense for Microsoft to make Teams free because it's actually really important strategically and it makes all their other products better. Again, not better from the individual product perspective, but better from delivering on this integration right. promise sort of better perspective. Better if you're a business who's trying to send Word docs around and integrate Outlook schedules and everything else. Like That's having right. it all work on the same software is a real advantage. Right. And so needless to say, this is not good for Slack. Uh, so, so Slack is, was upset and understandably so because it's like, look, we're trying to charge for our product and Microsoft's giving it away for free. That's unfair. And from the Slack perspective, yes, it was. And then Slack's also, you know, Slack was very, Slack was very arrogant at this time. Like when, when teams came out, they did the never do this released like a put like a full page ad in the wall street journal saying welcome microsoft to this space but you need to remember mm. to do it with love it's like uh <laughs> yeah what then what happened uh you know it, and the problem was like so many silicon valley, valley startups they were focused on their user experience the experience of chat and as i've said many times team sucks for chat it, it slack is better uh but companies don't exist to chat the chat is a means of getting work done and teams is better in many respects for getting various kinds of work done even though the chat sucks and and still sucks and should continue to be better now if you have a if you have a company there's lots of people that that are listening to us we have a very technical audience and media and stuff like that if you you can overcome this you can build good experiences that keep slack at the center but you have to remember a lot of the market out there does not have people that care that care about this they don't have yeah. people that are going to work to get it all to work they don't have technically sophisticated the users big market are is full of people who don't care about this at all and that's don't right that's have right to think about it and so in that getting a worse chat experience, but an overall better integration experience actually delivers an overall better sort of user experience. It's definitely better from an IT view. And also, by the way, it's cheaper because we are already paying for it. We're already paying for our 65 and now we get teams. So there was right. a combination of it's kind of unfair because it's free, but also Slack, I think you're, you don't understand the market that you're in and you're getting beat fair and square. So it's both fair and also unfair. And the unfair part also was sort of strategically sort of justified. Okay, so I have one question before you continue. Do you worry? I don't know if we need better infrastructure for most of the productivity apps that are used today. But do you worry that this sort of chills innovation in the enterprise software space? Or yeah, not. well, that that is that is the concern, right? And so the the, the Slack goes and complains to the EU that this is unfair; they're giving it away for free when we're trying to sell it, and the EU uh, unsurprisingly agrees. And so Microsoft, uh, you know, has to you know unbundles it, where if you want Teams now, you have to you have to pay for it. One thing that's interesting about this story is this is how this is why people in the US have to care about the EU is because we get cookie warnings in the U S because it's not, it's just, if you have to build it for the EU, you're, you're going to ship it to everyone. Right. Mm-hmm. This is the sort of the same story here. 
they're selling to multinationals they're selling to big companies who don't want to have one deal for europe and another deal for the for the rest of the world and so everyone's going to get the european deal and so you're going to have to pay for teams sort of separately from windows now i think people that that i'm kind of of two minds on this people are going to be like well it's already too late thanks but whatever that's sort of a broader regulation question story generally number two is uh like maybe because i feel guilty from the last episodes this is an example of a dominant company definitely leveraging its dominance in one area into another in that mm -hmm. because microsoft is dominant in office documents it's extending that into dominance in chat the, it does though encapsulate the tension which is i also think it's a better product for those sort of reasons but i'm for much more sympathetic needs. right when it goes it's to the thing last week right when it comes to these aggregator sort of stories i am much more receptive and, and worried about extensions. It, with a, I talk about extensions via contracts. I talk about extensions via acquisitions. This mm -hmm. is kind of an extension via tying, right? Or, or bundling, maybe a, a less, less uh, legally problematic. Right, it's not illegal use. in this country to do what Microsoft is doing, unless I'm mistaken. Yeah, I mean, so the, 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 the tying is illegal, tying is, but yeah. tying is basically, it's basically impossible to prove because you are able to argue in your defense that there is a customer benefit that comes from it and, and so microsoft can there's almost always say, a customer benefit this is cheaper because we're bundling these products together and giving customers more value right that would be their argument well we're delivering a better product like like the products work yeah, better together and so yeah and so um which i think is true right and, and so th this is a i would say this is one where broadly speaking I'm sympathetic to both sides. I like I, my overall skepticism and concern about product design by regulators always looms large, but I'm not going to like get upset about this sort of being held to not be okay. Right. You can definitely mm -hmm. like, I, I think like this is the Microsoft is definitely leveraging dominance in one area to get dominance in the other. Should they have charged all along? Um, I I, th I think that that's reasonable if you think that's sort of the case. I, I'm like I'm not super upset in either direction, and and like I said, this does fit into. I try to be consistent, like where I think you can sort of limit company dominance is extensions. Like in, yeah. in, in I should include that last week: contracts, acquisitions, and bundling. Like like uh, it's a fair thing to push back on.